Right, so another interesting question from EPR spectroscopy uh, which was asked for 4 marks in June 2016 paper. Right, and this question has been requested by Sanjukta Mishra. So, thanks for requesting this question because uh, uh, it, it has a good uh, concept uh, which is behind this question. So, the question says that the identify the correct statement for the EPR spectrum of vanadium uh, Rio, uh, so ACC whole twice is aceto acetone, right? With square pyramidal geometry at vanadium at 77 Kelvin, given that the uh, nuclear spin of vanadium is 7 by 2. Now, first of all, uh, if you see the structure of vanadium acetoacetate, it looks something like this I have drawn and it has been mentioned that it, it has a square pyramidal geometry right and this is the structure that is given so oxygen and carbon do not have any nuclear spins so the uh, so the EPS spectra the spectra will be only obtained because of the spin of vanadium now the formula I told you was 2 n plus 1 right so 2 into uh, 2 ni sorry 2 ni plus 1 and uh, so n is the number of atoms so number of vanadium atoms is only 1 into the spin of vanadium the spin of vanadium is 7 by 2 right plus 1 so the value comes out to be 8 so we will obtain 8 lines that is for sure so we will obtain 8 lines in the spectra and that is what has been given now it says whether we have to identify whether it will have 1 g value or it will have two g values as it is mentioned in the question and it has been mentioned also that the, the, the this uh, EPR measurement is being taken place uh, taking place at 77 Kelvin that is a very very low temperature now what happens is uh, see you have to see my previous videos that is EPR spectroscopy part 1 and 2 in order to especially part 2 in order to uh, you know solve this question so if you haven't seen uh, the my video just uh, you know go to my playlist of spectroscopy and you will find over there EPR part 2 so just just watch that because there I have uh, discussed the concept of G parallel and G perpendicular now see at high temperatures what happens is the G value for this complex uh, G parallel or G perpendicular or you can say G X G Y G Z you know on in all directions uh, the or you can like uh, specify G parallel and G perpendicular. So the G parallel and G perpendicular value is somehow the same, right? Because see, at lower temperatures, the uh, sorry, at higher temperatures, you know, there there is lot of uh, like you can say fluxional behavior, right? The concept of flux uh, fluxion, uh, fluxional behavior would not be applicable here. But what I mean is there will be fast exchange of ligands. So basically the overall structure or the overall G value for G parallel and G perpendicular at higher temperatures will remain the same. But what happens at lower temperatures especially uh, as low as 77 Kelvin what happens is that uh, you know this uh, the, the molecule it stiffens up or it becomes rigid right. So the correct word is the molecule becomes rigid at such, at such a low temperature the molecule becomes rigid. And because of this rigidity, now the G parallel and G perpendicular value become different. So to be uh, to be precise, if I tell you uh, the G parallel value uh, for vanadium uh, is 1.8, right? And the G perpendicular value is 1.6. Okay. So this this is the G value for G parallel and G perpendicular. So now we can see. That because of this uh, stiffness or this uh, uh, rigidity, the G value the, the, we can we have two G values now, one at 1.6 and one at 1.8. So th then that means this this first part it has two G values is correct. So part A is correct. So we can cancel out B and we can cancel out you can we can cancel out three and four because three and four have um, sorry I actually cancel out the wrong one. Uh, so it has two G values. So A part is definitely correct. It has two G values. Now you have to figure out the second part. Now the, so this we can cancel out. So C is not the correct op option, right? So sorry for cancelling out B and D. It could be B and D. It could be the fourth option, or it could be the first option A and D, right? It cannot be 
C. It cannot be C. So B and C and A and C we can cancel out. So we are left with one and four option. Whether it has eight lines only or whether it has uh, two patterns of eight lines each. Now, uh, if you remember delta E, that is uh, the, the, the electron spin is split into plus half and minus half, right? The energy is split into plus half and minus half. And this difference is delta E. If I measure this difference, this difference is delta E. And if you know the formula of delta E, the formula is G into beta that is the Bohr magneton that is a constant so this value is constant so G into beta into into the field uh, let's say let's denote field by H into the field so the field is constant right we are applying a constant field beta value that is a Bohr magneton is constant but now we have two G values that is one is G parallel and one is G perpendicular so because of this, the energy requirement for G parallel and G perpendicular is going to be different because of which some different amount of energy will be required for a G parallel a transition and a certain uh, a different amount of energy will be required for a G perpendicular transition. Now because of this, what is going to happen is we are going to get two kinds of patterns of eight lines each. The number of lines will remain same. It will be eight only. But like you can see from the formula, delta E is equal to G into beta into H and uh, the G value is changing because G parallel like we have, uh, like I have shown is 1.8 and G perpendicular is 1.6. So because of this change in the G value, what is going to happen is that the uh, transition, uh, the energy required for the transition is going to be different because of which we are going to have two patterns. So the correct option is option number one, that is A and T, right?